We assume to know what the right thing to do is. But sometimes people do things that end up being really, really bad. They take actions they regret till the end of their lives. I'm actually a huge fan of Tim Urban's TED Talk, Inside the Mind of a Massive Procrastinator. It's probably my most watched YouTube video, out of many reasons. In his TED Talk, he mentioned the concept of a life calendar, and I quote, that's one box for every week in a 90-year life, and that's not that many boxes. This calendar has been haunting me since then. I'm terrified of feeling regret when I'm at the last week of my own calendar. What are the right things to do to avoid this? Throughout the last decade, while studying and practicing physics, I started to see a pattern. It's just a hypothesis, but it explains plenty of cases why people are successful. My idea is that scientific thinking leads to doing the right things. Let me quickly walk you through the concept of scientific thinking. Everything starts with seeing, and I don't mean literally. It's more observing, the active acquisition of information from your environment, like reading the newspaper, talking to a person, conducting an experiment, and so on. After seeing comes explaining, trying to find answers to why you see what you see. These two steps are done by pretty much everybody. We see things, and most of the time, we have some explanation to it. Now comes the part that distinguishes modern science from others. It's testing. And at its core, you have to predict additional observations you would make if your explanation was right, and then go make those observations. If your prediction is right, hooray! Your theory just got stronger. And if your prediction is wrong, I'm sorry. You have to ditch your theory and start again. This is pretty much scientific thinking. I like to call it the golden triangle. Countless scientists and philosophers have refined this theory throughout the last millennium. Running through this process once can be as short as a few seconds of thoughts in your mind, up to centuries of work divided over multiple generations of commitment. And you will discover by time that the more you iterate over this triangle, the deeper your knowledge gets. Above all, this golden triangle is extremely powerful with any kind of topics, even beyond science. For example, in which universe is that person more popular than I am? Why does that guy get better grades, even though he hardly studies at all? What is the meaning of life? And is cereal soup? I have found out that continuously practicing this golden triangle is the best preparation for doing the right things. Everyone does that, consciously or unconsciously, but the inspired people, they are aware of taking advantage of scientific thinking, they know the importance of applying these rules, and they know how to use it as a source to motivate their actions. Scientific thinking leads to doing the right things. Now, let me give you an example. Imagine you discovered something important that nobody would believe. Even worse, your discovery might get you into serious trouble. And that's what happened with Nicolaus Copernicus, 1514. Back then, during the Renaissance, understanding the march of the stars was one of the hottest research topics in Europe. And there, virtually everybody believed that the Earth was in the center of the universe and all the stars revolved around it. Copernicus saw, like everyone else, that the stellar objects move from one side to the other side every single day. He learned in school from the explanation that this is due to the so-called geocentric system. In order to test it, he calculated the exact trajectories on how the stars would move, pointed up his telescope towards the sky, and BAM! The geocentric worldview did not agree with his experiment. The outcome, we all know is the dawn of the scientific revolution. Without it, the law of gravity could have never been discovered and the industrial revolutions might have never taken place. The root cause of Copernicus' action is that he believed that not only himself, but the society as a whole should follow the principles of science. Scientific thinking leads to doing the right thing. Let me give you a more recent case. Sir is my go-to example to a facility which is nowadays running and enthusiastically following the principles of science. 
as the largest particle physics laboratory in the world. It has 23 member states and over 12,000 participating scientists. The core facility at CERN is the particle accelerator called the Large Hadron Collider. It is a 27 kilometer underground ring located 100 meters below the Swiss French border near Geneva. And it is the most powerful accelerator ever built. And it is designed to collide protons together up to 40 million times each second. These collisions take place at four points around the ring, and at each collision point sits a large particle detector. Each detector is built and operated by different international collaborations. CMS and ATLAS are two different general purpose detectors designed to observe any kind of physics that nature might manifest. CMS stands for Compact Muon Solenoid. It gets its name from the fact that it's 50 meters high, 21 meters long, and it is really compact for all the material it contains. And it is designed to detect particles known as muons very accurately. It has also the most powerful solenoid magnet ever made. This detector weighs about 14,000 tons and has around 75 million individual channels for detecting and identifying all sorts of particles. Now, while I was speaking, you might have realized that particle physicists love to use fancy words like the Large Hadron Collider or Compact Neon Solenoid. And if you are worried of not understanding all the words I said, then worry not. Even seasoned BBC journalists can become victims of CERN's terminologies when they have to report the 2013 Hadron Collider restart. That actually really showed up in the television. CERN's continuous practice of the Golden Triangle has inspired not only the discovery of the Higgs boson that garnered a Nobel Prize in 2013 and the invention of the World Wide Web, but it has been a factory for numerous scientific discoveries and industrial revolutions. I myself am part of a team testing a theory that predicts a new particle which we call the heavy neutral lepton. This particle explains plenty of questions that looms over the greatest thinkers we have today in the world. It answers questions like what dark matter is made of and other interesting things like uh, why is the neutrino mass so small or why do we have so much more matter than antimatter in the universe. My role here is to see if CERN can produce this dark matter particle during the proton collisions or not. The core challenge here is to go through the entire detector recordings and observe at every single collision whether this dark matter particle has been produced or not. And this can be particularly difficult if we cannot detect the dark matter particle directly but can only observe how it interacts with those the detector can record. Under this circumstance, we were inspired to come up with new statistical methods. It is based on advances in modern machine learning algorithms that are very similar to those applied in applications that can interpret photos, like this one, which can distinguish chihuahuas from blueberry muffins. <laughs> Since detector recordings are mathematically very similar to photographies, digital photographies, we ended up training an artificial neural network that helps us to identify the collisions where we have a new particle or not. The result of the analysis tells us with which certainty we have found this kind of new particle, with which certainty we have found that kind of new particle, since there are different kinds of particles we can find, and with which certainty we have found nothing, which is also a very valuable piece of information. Now, after carefully analyzing the data for many years with countless all-nighters and problems to overcome. I'm actually very proud to stand in front of you today to announce that last week, Friday, almost at midnight, we finally managed to still not have found this particle. <laughs> we might end up really not finding it, but don't you see? It is too important not to try it. Overall, we managed to apply surgically artificial intelligence to some of our problems. It is also helping some of other scientists too. It is not by far not as great as leading the scientific revolution or inventing the World Wide Web. 
But continuously practicing the golden triangle has given me the reassuring feeling of being proud of what I've done and not regretting the sacrifices I had to make. It's worked out pretty well so far for me. Scientific thinking leads to doing the right things. Let me give you one more example, and this time it is a failure in scientific thinking. That animal has caused so much trouble in Australia. It is called the sugarcane toad, and everything started in the 1930s. Back then, sugarcane growers in Queensland were very concerned of crop damage due to beetles. The Australian Government of Agriculture looked into possible solutions. Based on reports from successfully introducing beetle-eating cane toads in Hawaii sugar cane fields, the Australian government has decided to import the toads. And that was a catastrophic decision. The toads ultimately failed to feed on the beetles, and instead they became a massive pest. Just over 100 were introduced, and there are now hundreds of millions native predators that feast on those toads, rarely survive the meal, and Australia's ecosystem was on the verge of collapse because of this. Now, I have no doubt that those involved believed that they were doing the right things. They saw that the toad method worked in Hawaii, and they believed that everything would also work in Australia. But instead of extensively testing this idea, they took the shortcut and implemented an untested hypothesis. Just a simple but well thought experiment might be enough to prove that idea wrong. Okay. No matter whether it was overconfidence or industrial pressure, what I want to stress here is how hard it is to really know something, how careful we ought to be with checking our experiments, how easy it is to make mistakes and fool ourselves. It is it's so easy to practice the golden triangle, but it is insanely hard to practice it right. But if we try, we will ultimately be rewarded with deep, long-lasting knowledge. Scientific thinking leads to do the right things. There's actually one more problem to solve. This whole concept is not consistent yet. How can I avoid a sugar cane toad disaster happening with me? When I practice this golden triangle, when do I know that the scientific thinking I did was enough or not? And I say the solution is the intuition. Listen to your intuition, use your gut feelings. It appears to me like that our intuition is like a little scientifically thinking man sitting in the unconscious part in our brain, far cleverer than our rational selves, constantly generating wisdom while we live alone. And once in a while, this little man comes out of his house, gives us an advice without explanation. Okay, this explains at least why some experienced professionals can develop astounding intuitions of their skills. And we can also nourish our own intuition by putting ourselves deliberately in specific sceneries and meditate over the memories once we have them. Do you want to have a better intuition for culture and language? Go travel. You want a better intuition for physics? Solve some physics exercises. You want to be a funnier person? Go watch some comedies and practice telling some jokes. Now, you can argue, if I want to practice this rational golden triangle, how can I include intuition in such a process? We are actually already doing it. When we see things, our intuition tells us what catches our attention and what we doubt and immediately want to investigate. And when we explain things, our intuition provides us with a first guess, which we can iterate on rationally. And if we want to test our explanation, the intuition gives us ideas how to test the hypothesis and whether the testing we did was sufficient or not. Scientific thinking leads to doing the right things, but Really, respect your intuition, for it is an integral part of the whole process. But also beware of the dangers of blindly following the intuition and over-trusting it, for the intuition also has its limits. It is only as good as the number and quality of experiences we had in our lives. Many bankers have ruined their careers and even their lives 
um, intuitively betting on the wrong stocks. I think we should let the intuition be a loyal consultant to us, but not let it completely and unsupervised take over the whole wheel. Now, like many of the young audience here today, I'm still in the process of finding the right things I want to do in my life. I've certainly not experienced enough to tell you how to forge a perfect life. But when I look at other people doing good or terrible things, I start to realize more and more that this rule has something to it. Scientific thinking needs to do the right thing. This is my take-home message for you today. And I believe that if more people practice the golden triangle, if more people believed and they evaluated and doubted their worldviews before they start to make them their own, the world would then become a better place. Thank you.